This presentation will demonstrate the appropriate technique for the reduction and fixation of complex mid-face fractures and an orbital floor defect. To do this, the matrix mid-face system will be used. The trauma has caused fractures at the Lefort 1, 2, and 3 levels. With bilateral separation and displacement of the zygomatico-maxillary complex, as well as a multifragmented nasal-orbital ethmoid fracture, the matrix mid-face system has one screw diameter, the 1.55 millimeter screw, which can be used with all four plate thicknesses. There are self-drilling or self-tapping screws. Emergency screws are also available. One screwdriver fits all the screws. In this exercise, only bronze self-tapping screws will be used. The matrix mid-face system is used with all mid-face trauma indications. The plates are color-coded to indicate their thickness. In this exercise, the blue 0.5 mm thick and the pink 0.7 mm thick plates will be used. There is also a range of orbital floor mesh plates. Here, a blue 0.3 mm thick plate is used. The objectives of this presentation are to show the importance of correct anatomical reduction to reproduce the original width, height, and projection of the mid-facial bones, the right sequence of reduction and fixation, and the importance of achieving correct occlusion. The mid-face has six main vertical buttresses. They are the two nasofrontal, the two lateral zygomatic, and the two pterygomaxillary buttresses. Reconstruction of the zygomatic arch determines the projections and the width of the face. Repair of the vertical facial buttresses restores height and resistance to occlusal forces. The exception is the pterygomaxillary buttresses, which cannot be plated. For complex mid-face fractures and orbital floor fractures, preoperative CT scans in axial and coronal cuts are standard. Additional sagittal and three-dimensional reconstructions are often helpful. Radiographs may also be useful in certain circumstances. To repair the mid-face fractures, 0.5 mm and 0.7 mm thick adaption plates and a 0.5 mm thick Y plate are needed. 0.7 mm thick L plates are used for the Lefour 1 fracture. The orbital floor defect is repaired with a 0.3 mm thick orbital floor mesh plate. The correct surgical sequence for treating these fractures is the application of Ernst ligatures, the surgical approaches, establishing the occlusion, reduction and stabilization of the fractures, fixation of the zygomatico-frontal suture, fixation of the zygomatic arch, fixation of the nasofrontal and infraorbital rim fractures, fixation of the maxillary buttresses, and finally, the repair of the orbital floor defect. The matrix mid-face instruments needed are the 2.4 mm self-drilling threaded reduction tool with the T-handle and the screwdriver handle, the in-plane plate bender, two standard plate benders, the plate cutter, the mesh cutting scissors, the mini plate holder, the 1.1 mm drill bit with 6 mm stop, the screwdriver handle, and the screwdriver shaft with spring holding sleeve. In a clinical setting, arch bars are usually applied to the teeth. In this exercise, Ernst ligatures are used to simplify the procedure. Maxillomandibular fixation, MMF, 
is not achieved until after the exposure and mobilization of the maxilla. Complex mid-phase fractures can be approached with a combination of a coronal incision, a lower eyelid, or a transconjunctival incision, and a transoral upper buccal sulcus incision, if lacerations are present. They can also be used to access the underlying fractures. In general, when the mandible is intact, MMF can help to position the mid-face. The maxilla has to be aggressively mobilized until it can be placed into MMF without tension. Reduction begins at the zygomatico-frontal suture. The outer facial frame should be reduced and stabilized prior to nasoorbitoethmoid and internal orbital reconstruction. Reduction progresses downward to the Lefort 1 level. In the clinical situation, the reduction of the zygomatico-maxillary complex fracture is begun by inserting the self-drilling 2.4 mm threaded reduction tool with the screwdriver handle through a stab incision in the skin into the dense bone of the malar eminence. This reduction tool is positioned so that it does not interfere with the areas that will be plated and should not be fully inserted. The screwdriver handle is disengaged from the reduction tool by pulling back on the sleeve. The T-handle is mounted by pushing the sleeve forward until it is fully engaged with the shaft. The sleeve is then released. The T-handle is used to manipulate the bone fragment until the fractures are reduced. The reduction of all the fractures is checked. The T-handle is removed. A 0.7 mm thick, 20-hole long adaption plate is selected. In this exercise, it's trimmed with the plate cutter to five holes. This five-hole plate is contoured to the shape of the lateral orbital rim using two standard plate benders. The plate is held in position with the plate holding forceps. The first hole is drilled through the inferior plate hole closest to the fracture using a 1.1 mm drill bit with 6 mm stop. Inserting a screw in this hole makes it possible to use the plate to reduce the fracture gap. A 6 mm long screw is inserted using the screwdriver shaft with holding sleeve. The screw is not tightened completely to allow some movement of the plate. The plate is positioned over the orbital rim above the fracture gap and pulled superiorly to close the gap. The second hole is drilled just superior to the fracture line. Another 6 mm long screw is inserted. These two screws provide some stability and allow the zygomatic arch and orbital rim to be reduced. The remaining screws will be inserted after the other fractures have been stabilized. The hole over the fracture line is not used. The next step is fixation of the zygomatic arch, which is essential to establish the correct anterior-posterior projection and the width of the face. A straight 5-hole, 0.7 mm thick adaption plate is selected for this area when there's only one fracture through the arch. If, however, the zygomatic arch fracture is comminuted, it would require a longer plate to span all the fracture fragments. Due to the anatomical form of the arch, it is usually not necessary to pre-bend the plate. The first hole is drilled close to the fracture line in the zygomatic segment. A 6 mm long screw is inserted. To achieve a better reduction of the zygomatic arch, the T-handle and traction on the plate can be used. Another screw is inserted on the opposite side of the fracture line.
the T-handle can now be removed. The correct three-dimensional reduction of the zygoma is confirmed by an intraorbital examination of the lateral orbital wall. It is important to ensure there is no step-off between the greater wing of the sphenoid and the zygoma. If the alignment is correct, the remaining screws are placed in both plates. The reduction tool is removed using the screwdriver handle. Fixation of the zygomatic complex is repeated on the opposite side. A 0.7 mm thick plate is placed at the zygomatico-frontal suture and another on the zygomatic arch. Now comes the plating of the nasofrontal and the infraorbital rim fractures. First, after reduction of the medial nasomaxillary segment, plating of the right infraorbital rim is completed. Second, the nasofrontal and the infraorbital rim fractures are plated with 0.5 mm thick plates. At least two screws are inserted on each side of the fracture. And third, the reconstruction of the left orbital rim starts with anatomical realignment of the fractures. This can be achieved with either one long plate or a combination of smaller plates. In addition to or instead of the two small plates along the nasofrontal fracture, an inverted 0.5 mm thick Y plate can be used for further reduction and stability of this area. If maxillomandibular fixation was not applied earlier, it must be applied now. The maxillomandibular complex is rotated around the condylar hinge axis superiorly until bone contact is made. Small gaps across the Lafour 1 area are acceptable. Attempting to approximate the small gaps by further rotation of the maxillomandibular complex may result in distraction of the condyles from their fossa, causing an anterior open bite when the MMF is removed. The Lafour 1 fracture is stabilized with four 0.7 mm thick 3 by 4 hole L plates. The plates are contoured with the in-plane plate bender. The first plates are placed along the piriform aperture, restoring the nasomaxillary buttresses. The tooth roots must be avoided when placing the caudal screws. The fixation is finished with two more plates on the zygomatical maxillary buttresses. The bone here is considerably stronger than it is over the maxillary sinus. The in-plane plate bender is used to change the angle of the foot of the plate. All plates are applied and filled with screws. Following the reduction of the Lafour 1 level, the MMF is removed and the occlusion is checked. The plating of the basic framework of the mid-face is now complete. It is important to note that the patient is allowed to function after this type of fixation. In a clinical situation after the orbital floor is exposed, an orbital retractor cap can be used to elevate the orbital contents. A 0.3 mm thick orbital floor mesh plate is selected to repair the orbital floor defect. The radial design fits the conical shape of the orbit. The mesh cutting scissors are used to trim the plate to the correct anatomical size. It is important to use a large enough plate to span the entire defect. There have to be enough screw holes to fix the plate posterior to the inferior orbital rim. One or two screws are adequate. All sharp edges are trimmed to ensure the protection of the soft tissues. The plate is contoured to match the anatomical features of the orbital floor and rim. 
accurate contouring is crucial to restore the normal orbital volume. In the clinic, the soft tissues must be retracted to avoid entrapment. A hole is drilled posterior to the infraorbital rim using a 1.1 millimeter drill bit with 6 millimeter stop. A 6 millimeter long screw is inserted. If necessary, additional screws are inserted until the orbital mesh plate is securely fixed in place. Post-operative images are usually obtained to confirm proper reduction and fixation of the mid-face and proper reconstruction of the internal orbits. An option for orbital floor reconstruction are titanium contourable mesh plates.